when going into a fat loss phase, it's extremely tempting to just jump into a large calorie deficit and stay in that calorie deficit until you've lost all your fat. While obviously you need to create a calorie deficit, but staying in that large calorie deficit for too long can cause problems such as metabolic adaptation, a lot of muscle loss and strength loss, your energy is going to suffer, your performance is going to suffer, and your results in the gym are going to suffer. But there's obviously more to it. I'm not going to go into that in detail, but what I want to bring to your attention is a study in 2011 by Garth et al. compared a fast weight loss to a slow weight loss regime and actually found that the slow weight loss regime was better at maintaining muscle mass. And they looked at 24 athletes in this particular study. When we're in a situation where we've been in a calorie deficit for a while and there's two to three weeks without any progress, we start to question whether what we're doing is actually working. We start to question loads of things and it's quite easy to fall off. But that's where something called diet breaks may come in. And a particular study that made diet breaks like explode was the famous 2018 study by Brian et al. And that was the Matador study. And what this study did was they looked at two groups. They looked at a continuous diet group. So someone that followed, well, this group in particular followed a calorie deficit for 16 weeks consistently. And then the other group, which followed the same calorie deficit for 16 weeks, but in between took two weeks on to, to uh, on the deficit and two weeks at maintenance. So they had a two weeks, two weeks in between where they ate at maintenance level calories. So this obviously lasted longer. This lasted 30 weeks in total, but that group, the diet break group lost 50% more body fat and also saw a they didn't see as much of a decline in their resting energy expenditure. It was about half that of the continuous diet group. And better yet, they'd done a sixth month follow-up and the diet group, no, the even the diet break group actually maintained more fat loss than the continuous diet group. This sounds extremely promising, but there is one caveat to the study. It was done in obese, and I wouldn't say they were sedentary, but largely they weren't really exercising. I think they did an hour, 30 minutes to an hour of a week of exercise. So they weren't, in, it wasn't done in the resistance training population. The reason for the diet break group being able to keep the weight off and consistently keep that weight off I would assume would be down to adherence. It would be down to understanding where that maintenance level is because they spent so many different weeks, well, I think so many different weeks, they spent <laughs> quite a bit of time at maintenance. So that time at maintenance helped them understand their portion sizes and what it took to maintain their body weight. Before we start getting excited and say, okay, I'm gonna do diet breaks all the time, Let's look at a more recent paper, 2021 paper, which looked at resistance trained females. They actually found no difference between a continuous diet group and a diet break group in terms of body composition, in terms of metabolic rate and fat loss. So you're probably thinking, ah, okay, so no diet breaks, but there was a reported level, well, reported levels of lower hunger and increased diet satisfaction, meaning that they're likely to stick to that for a longer period of time. So that's where diet breaks can be an extremely useful tool. Because think about it, even from a logical perspective, you're breaking up your diet with periods where you get to eat more, and then you're going back to your diet. So you can actually end up looking forward to those periods of eating a bit more. And how long do those periods look? I mean, in that particular study, it was three weeks on a deficit and one week off. In the Matador study, it was two weeks on, two weeks off. Lane Norton actually recommends two weeks on and one week off. So that's two weeks on a, in a deficit and then one week of maintenance. To be honest, you need to assess whether you even need this. If you see a stall in your weight loss, this is great to implement and I would do personally a week at maintenance, otherwise you might get sidetracked but um, the choice is up to you. Obviously, you can do a bit longer maintenance if you feel like you need it, or you're going through a period of higher stress and maybe higher workload, and maybe 
you want to push it a bit more in the gym. But this is not something you just use for the sake of using it. You're not going to fix what's not broken. You're not going to start suddenly say, oh, let me just have a diet break when you don't actually need it. If you're continuously losing weight, there's no need to stop and just say, I'm going to eat a maintenance. And yeah, that, that's the end of that. <laughs> it's just not one of those things where you just have to do. If you're losing weight, you're successfully losing weight. It's not something you'll probably find that your metabolism is not as uh, adapting as much as you think it is. There could be a variety of reasons, but if you're losing weight, continue doing what you're doing. Just make sure you're not seeing strength declines, uh, any interference with sleep, or anything along those lines. Anyway, this was a very short and sweet video, primarily because there's not that much research on diet breaks. There was an earlier study, but I didn't feel like there was a need to include it. But those two studies, uh, two kind of more or less opposing views. I know that Bill Campbell has a study coming out later this year, so I might do an up updated video. But I think that Bill Campbell's study, found, from what I know, found similar kind of similar results to the more recent study. So anyway, I'll do a more up-to-date video when the time comes. But in the meantime, if you've got any questions at all, comment below. If you've got any further questions, obviously feel free to send me a DM on my Instagram. That's at Adam Scott Fit. And until the next video, keep pushing those limits.